If you're American or if you've been to Waffle House a couple of times, please let me know in the comments what I have to expect if I order a pecan waffle with regular hash browns, smothered, covered and peppered. Because I don't know whether this will be sweet or savory, and if it's savory then it doesn't really go with pecan for me. But even after looking at the menu of Waffle House one town over, I still don't know what this is. Because apparently the UK doesn't do it the way the US does, so if you know what it is, please let me know. Hey Cleo. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kit and today I would like to talk about Legend Born by Tracy Don. Brie gets into an early college program at her mother's alma mater against her mom's express wishes. The night they argue about this, Brie's mom dies in a car crash. And a couple of months later, Brie goes to college for this program while she still struggles with her loss. The first night, Brie and her best friend Alice go out on campus grounds. They encounter something strange that unlocks a memory within Brie. There are people at campus who can use magic, and this is not the first time Brie has seen magic. Convinced that something is afoot with her mom's death, Brie sets out to infiltrate this organization and investigate herself. Overall, I was pretty happy with this book. There are only some very minor things and one pet peeve of mine that took away from the enjoyment. But first, let's talk about characters, because Brie is a great character. She is really struggling with her grief. And while she tries to lock all of this away, you can sometimes see the anger come through. And it really endears Brie to you. It's quite easy to side with Brie and root for her. Not least of all because she encounters ra racism at virtually every corner and some of those lines make you wonder whether this actually plays in the 21st century, but yeah, it is playing in the 21st century, just in the south of the US, where apparently that is everyday occurrence and it's just, it's incredible to read. I really appreciated how angry Brie got at some points, including at the moment when a friend of hers just goes for her hair to tell her how great it is or something, when you just sit there with your book like, that's not okay anyway, you don't just touch people without their express consent, even if you're trying to pay them a compliment. And Brie gets really pissed about this and I see why. Possibly my favorite character was her best friend Alice. She's the kind of best friend you would wish everybody had. She will have your bag even if it's in ways that you don't appreciate in the moment, but she's always there for you and even when you drop her in circumstances that must seem very strange and dangerous to her, she just stands her ground and is there for Brie. The one character that I didn't really warm up to all that much was Nick because he just seemed a bit too good to be true in most cases, aside from the random jealousy that crops up at one point. It's just like, it's linked to my pet peeve of like a love triangle being on the horizon, nothing in the direction quite happens yet, but you get the impression that it will happen in the next book. So Bree's partner in the organization is Nick, but then she goes out with somebody else to investigate something. It is literally just all business. She comes back and Nick hears about it. He's like, oh my God, you went out with him? And it's just like, oh dude, seriously, you know what she's here for? And yeah, it's the kind of stuff that vexes me. Sal is a bit of a grouchy bastard, but once you learn a bit about his backstory, you kind of see why. And his initial take on Brie causes quite a bit of tension. But then the progression in their relationship also makes sense because in the beginning Bree's actually scared of him and then it takes them some time to get to know each other before they move on to a sort of alliance. So yeah, despite the fact that he comes off as the typical bad boy at the very beginning, he was quite an okay character in the end as well. There are quite a few side characters with a mixed and good representation throughout. 
but also because there are quite a few of them and then you also have the structure within the organization with like pages, squires and this belongs to this knight and these guys belong to that knight. And I got a bit confused about that. Also, if I don't have a real picture of somebody, which you wouldn't have for the knights obviously because, you know, they're the stuff of legends, then I don't connect people to it really. So I was just, there were names on the page and I was like, yeah, yeah whatever, belongs to some knight, belongs to another group, okay, whatever. You know, if you're less chaotic than me, then it might make more sense, but it was one minor point of confusion for me. Within the plot, I really only had one question for one of the magical creatures that you encounter throughout the story. Okay, so this creature can impersonate somebody. I see how that would work in the short term or on a battlefield or whatever, if you try to infiltrate something for a short run and grab kind of mission. But apparently this thing impersonated a member of the organization for quite some time and fooled everybody, people that worked with this person, this person's girlfriend, and I'm just like, how? How are you this good? Like, even with magic, this seems very hard to pull off, but maybe we'll learn more about these magical creatures and their abilities in the next book. For now, they left me a tiny bit confused or like a tiny bit too strong in their abilities, maybe. There are also a couple of points where proofreading either missed something or I'm completely misunderstanding something. Like at some point they're having a toast and one of the characters says here, here, but in the location word, not the verb that you would use to say here, here when somebody gives a speech. And the other thing was you, Vaughn and Witty found far and away the most objects on the list followed by Sydney, Gree and Blake. Far and away in this context made no sense to me. I would imagine it should be by far, or maybe this is just the way people say it in the South of the years, and I've just never seen it before, but those were like one or two points where I paused within the story. Yeah, and then the love triangle is just my major pet peeve, where it's literally all books where it turns up. Because Brie is clearly attracted to both of these guys. And I was just sitting here like, yeah, okay, he has nice abs, it's, it's okay, we can move on now because me don't really care either way. But yeah, I imagine after something that happens at the end of this book, she will become even closer with the other guy in the next book and then there will be a lot more drama in regards to this. There was one line where I feel I should comment on it. They go out somewhere and she, Brie is clearly not of age, so she gets a fake ID that does look little like her or, you know, anybody who actually pays attention would see, okay, this is not a person on this ID. But she gets past the bouncer, I imagine A, he doesn't really care, or B, as her friend suggests, white folks face blindness for different races is a thing. That is not technically a white people thing, that's a thing of you not being exposed to different groups or different ethnicities for long enough. Because I know from my time in Japan that we all look the same to Japanese people as well, if they don't hang out with white folks or whatever regularly. So yeah, literally everybody in my class more or less look the same to them and we look nothing alike from our standpoint. So the book tackles a couple of difficult topics, obviously racism and grief, where there's also an enlightening afterward on both where she got the idea or inspiration for Rootcraft from and how to handle grief and how some things are just left undiagnosed because grief has not been researched enough, it seems. I feel like I need more cats for reviews because technically I would say this is 4.5 stars because I don't have a cat for that, unless I paint some kittens that we can add to the cat, I don't know. But for now, it is this cat, just because love triangles, whether it's already in there or just looming on the horizon, are really not my thing. And outside of that, it was a really enjoyable read, and you should totally pick it up for yourself if you can handle love triangle, that is. Let me know in the comments if you would have wanted to join an organization that fights magical beings at college, if you'd had a choice. Thinking of the initiative and Buffy here, 
more than this book, but you're probably better off with people in this book. Well, like and subscribe if you want to help this channel out. And thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week with another video. Bye, guys! What are you doing over there, Cleo? If you want to be on the window sill, so you want to be here. Go on then. Do something about the light because it creates a blinding effect. Now you're trapped behind the curtain. Yeah, life sucks sometimes. There's still nothing in there for you, Cleo. It's crafting material. Unless you want to start painting, it's not in, of any interest to you.